Alright guys, so let's continue on with the texturing in this part. So in the last part we finished up with the wood floor. So now what I'd like to do is move on to the second wood material that we're going to use for the furniture and the framing of the bed. So what we could do is just take this first wood material and just duplicate that and we'll call this furniture. And for the diffuse layer I want to choose a different wood material. So we'll go to load image and what I want to use for the furniture is going to be this wood 11 seamless file here. So we'll open that one up. Now since this is going to be used for furniture we might be able to get away with some reflection but I don't want it to be as glossy as the floor. So what I'm going to do is take the amount here for the specular layer transparency I'm going to take that up to maybe a value of 95. So we need to take this and I'm going to jump out of the camera so we can move around a little better that way we don't mess around with the position of our main camera. And let's start here on the bed. So for the furniture null we'll open that up. We'll go down to bed and expand that. And I want to take this material that we just created and put that to the headboard and again by default it comes in a spherical so we need to change this to cubic and then we can control click and drag to duplicate that down to the rest of the bed now the scale on this should be okay so now I want to take this same material and apply it to these two nightstands on both sides of the bed so let's close up the bed null and we have nightstand here now instead of applying this new wood material to every single object. We can just apply it to the main null. Now we already have one set up with the correct projection for the bed. So we can just take the material from the bed here, control click and drag that up to the nightstand, and then duplicate that to the next one. Now you'll notice that the pattern here is going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to delete the first one and I'm going to click on this one, click on the nightstand object, we're in texture axis tool mode and I want to grab the rotate tool and I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees and then I'm going to control click and drag to duplicate that to the nightstand and over here on this side we have a TV stand as well as some type of tall vertical type stand as well so I'm just going to duplicate this to that and I'm also going to duplicate it to the tall dresser object. Alright, so we'll go back to our main camera and let's render this now and let's see what this looks like. Now one thing right off hand that I've noticed since the very first time I started rendering was that the little render buckets are actually rather small. So we're, we're going to need to go into the render settings to kind of change that. I would prefer to take them up just a little bit. Um, really quick you can see that the wood material here actually looks pretty good. I'm happy with the way that looks. So let's go over to the render settings and what we need to do is go to V-Ray System and you'll notice here that the picture viewer buckets are 32 pixels wide but the viewport is only 16 so I'm gonna take both of these to 32 and we'll go back and now if we render this again now these buckets should be a little bigger there they go alright so this is actually looking pretty good so the next thing I want to do is create one more type of wood material that's going to be used for the deck and for the deck furniture so we'll get out of the camera and we'll go over to the deck area here and we'll expand the deck null so I'm gonna take this furniture material control click and drag to duplicate it and we'll call this deck wood so we'll go to the diffuse layer one and we want to load in a new wood material 
And the one that I want to load in would be this natural wood grain here, which is going to be wood tin. So we'll open that up and we'll leave all the settings where they are at. The only thing I think I might want to change is in the specular, I want to disable trace reflection. And I want to take the specular glossiness here and I want to take that up just to get a little bit of a highlight on there. So we want to take this new deck wood and we want to place this over here to the deck rails null. And we want to change the projection to cubic. And more than likely we're going to need to change the orientation. Uh, let's see, that actually doesn't look too bad. I think that'll work for now. And we also have this cube here, which is a very thin cube, which is acting as the floor. So there's several things we can do. We can reuse the deck material here that we used for the rails on the floor. Or we could just use one of these other ones, or we could just make a fourth wood material. So I think what I'd like to do is try this deck wood material that we used here on the floor just to see if maybe that's going to work properly. So we're going to control click and drag that up to the floor. And I, I'm not sure if I like the way that looks. That's kind of got a uniform pattern to it. And I don't know if I really like that or not. So what we could do is just delete that. And let's control click and drag to duplicate it. And in the diffuse layer, let's load in this wood 2 material. And I'm going to call this one deck floor. And we'll apply this to the floor object, change the projection to cubic, and that looks much better. Now we should probably change the orientation of it to match the other wood floor. So we just need to grab the rotate tool, rotate that 90 degrees, be sure you're in texture axis tool mode. And there we go. Okay, so now let's apply some of the wood material to our deck objects. So here we have two deck chairs and we have the table. So for the table, all we need to do is just select the material that's on the deck rail object, put that on the deck table, and that will work for that. So now for the two chairs, we can go in here and the two vertical pads on this one chair here these need to have their own separate color because they're not wood these are actually the padding for the chair but for everything else it can be the wood material so we could take this V-Ray material here for the deck rails drag it down to the null for this chair we can also do the same for the other deck chair and we want to create a material now that's going to be used for this padding so we need to create a new V-Ray material and I'm going to call this one chair padding. In the diffuse layer I want to load up a surface which is going to be tile and I kind of like the wavy look. So since this is going to be on the beach and there are waves we need to go down here to the pattern and choose waves 1 and I'm going to disable the bevel and I'm going to take the grout and the bevel width to maybe a value of something like 15 I think that will be okay and for the different colors for the tile color here for red I'm going to change this to a bright blue color for the gray I'm going to change that to white and we'll leave the black where it's at so since this is going to be for padding, there's really no reason to put any bump on it because the camera is not going to be that close to it and there's really no need for reflection. So what we'll do is we'll take this over here to the vertical pad and you can see that needs to be changed so we need to change the projection. Let's try cubic and that really doesn't look all that bad. It's oriented correctly but you can see we've got a little bit of a cutoff there. I really don't think that's going to be much of an issue right now. Let's control click and drag that down to the horizontal pad. All right, that looks good. And we want to apply the same material to these pads over here. So let's open up the second deck chair. 
scroll down here to the head button leg pad drag the material over change the projection to cubic and I just want to quickly see what that's going to look like when rendered and it looks like that pattern is going to be a little messed up there so if we click on the material and we change the projection to UVW it looks actually pretty nice here on the front side however on the sides and on the top you can see that it is distorted and that just doesn't look right now we could spend some time to generate a proper UVW map for this but I would rather just change this to maybe flat and I think that will work for now so we'll keep it at flat and we'll just duplicate this down to the other ones and that looks pretty good okay so that's going to be the same material that we're going to use for the rug here on the floor but since the hair tag is going to generate geometry for us and it's really going to slow down the viewport so I'm going to save the rug for the very last thing in this series there's really no reason to have all of that set up right now because it's just going to slow the viewport down so we're going to save that for last okay so we need to move over to the bed now to put some coloring on the sheets now in my original render I just left all of the sheets a white color and then I changed this sheet here that's hanging off the edge of the bed I made that the same color as the blue part of the wall so let's open up the bed null so we need to go to furniture and the bed's already open so we need to change the color here to just kind of be color coordinated with the room so for the sheet I'm going to use the blue material for the sheet and I'm also going to use that for the pillows and for the mattress I'm going to use the white color and I think that will look pretty good so we'll jump back into our camera and we'll just quickly render this to see what it looks like so you can see the render is really isn't taking all that long even with the uh, anti-aliasing uh, with a default value set at 1 by 4 it's actually rendering fairly quickly okay so that looks pretty good so one thing that I quickly notice is that this wall over here is kind of blank and I think we need some picture frames with some type of picture or something in it so I think before we get to the rug we'll add some picture frames on the wall just to kinda add a little more detail because right now the wall looks a little too bare alright so we'll jump out of the camera and the next thing we want to do is just set up some material for our lamps here now for the lampshade we could just use the white wall material for that so we need to go find the lamps and the lampshade is going to be that object number two so we'll just drag the white material over to there and the same thing for this one here which is on the other side so we want to create a aluminum metal type look for these lamp stands so we're going to create a V-Ray advanced material again and I'm going to call this one metal and in the diffuse layer one I'm just going to click up here to select the color and I'm going to choose a dark gray type of color and then we want to activate the specular channel one and we want to take the reflection glossiness and we want to pull that down a little bit maybe to a value of 0.8 take the highlight glossiness up and maybe to a value of something like 0.65 and I think that will work so let's take this new metal material apply it to the lamp null control click and drag down to apply it to the second one we could also take the same material and apply it to the clock and we also have 
some railing over here for the sliding glass doors. So we need to apply that to those doors as well. So what we could do is go over here to the sliding glass door null and open that up. And here we have our rails. So I'm going to take this material and apply it to the rails. And I'm also going to apply it to these two sliding glass door objects. And if we expand them, you can see we have the glass object inside. So what we could do is go ahead and enable these glass objects. I had them turned off by default. That way we could actually see in through the top upper window on the ceiling and these two doors. So we need to create a new V-Ray material. And we're going to call this one glass. So we need to activate the refraction layer. We need to turn off the diffuse layer. And we can leave these settings where they're at at a value of 1.6 here for the IOR. And we need to go enable the reflection layer. So now we can take the glass material and we can apply that to these two glass doors. Now be sure that you don't forget we also have some glass windows up here on the top. So we need to go to room structure and we need to go to glass ceiling and we need to turn that glass object on there and then we can just take this glass material and drag it over there. So since we're up here dealing with the ceiling we can take this white wall material drag it over to the glass ceiling object. We can also drag this over here to the ceiling roof and we could also drag it to the rafters that I have listed here as well. Okay, so we'll close that up. And now let's render this one more time now with the glass material in place. All right, so you can see here that something has happened with the glass material. And the reason for this is because we need to give this glass material a compositing tag. So what we need to do is find our glass object. So we'll start with the sliding glass door. And we need to click on the bottom glass object here. Right click on it, go to V-Ray Bridge Tags, and we need to give it a V-Ray Compositing Tag. And we need to disable Cast Shadows. And we also need to disable Generate GIs. So we could just take this one and control click and drag up. And then we also need to make the same one for the room structure, which is going to be this glass object here. So we'll just control click and drag up to duplicate it to this glass object here. And the reason for that is because when V-Ray renders it, it's casting a shadow, which means it's going to act as a solid object. And we don't want that. We want all the light to come through. So if we go back and render this again now with the compositing tag applied. Now you can see we're getting light coming through our sliding glass doors and through the ceiling glass on the roof. So I'll just let this uh, finish rendering here for a second. All right, so we got the light coming in, but it's acting as a mirror. So in order to get around this problem, we can go into the glass material click on the reflection layer and for the reflection layer transparency we need to take this value up. So if we take this up to maybe a value of let's try something like maybe 80. Alright there we go. So we will render this one more time and now our glass should be appearing as glass and it should also have a very slight reflection to it. Okay, so you can see now by just making that very small adjustment that we have fixed the problem with the glass and now it's rendering properly. Okay, so that concludes this part and in the next part we will continue on with setting up some material here for our TV screen that we have sitting on the dresser. We'll also put some material over on these plants and then we'll make our picture frames for the walls. We also need to apply some material to our lights. And then we'll set up the hair for the rug.